If you're a visitor this morning, welcome to church. We're thrilled to have you. And uh, one of the three things we do, we worship God, we minister to one another, because that's, uh, that's what Jesus did. And we have the Word of God, because the Word of God is our foundation. And uh, we live in a time where there's lots of winds and waves of doctrines going every different way, but the Word of God is solid. It is the foundation. It's, it's what leads us and guides us. It's what, when we come up against arguments and different things, the Word of God is where we go to. When Jesus was tempted, he went to the Word of God. He didn't reason with Satan. He simply said, here's what the Bible says. Here's what, the, here's what Scripture says. Don't tempt the Lord your God. You know? So, that's our foundation. In fact, we're going to have, through the New Testament, 60 days. And I, I want, man, I just encourage everybody to be a part of that. Starting on the 23rd, uh, and there's a bunch of different people. We're going to have a list of different uh People who are going to, who can lead it, leaders, and, and a list of people, and a list of when they're going to be having their, uh, um, be meeting. So you meet once a week, you watch a video, uh, you share about what you read, and in 60 days you will have read all the way through the New, Te New Testament. <coughs> Guys, there's nothing like first-hand account. Yes. As wonderful as Pastor Drew and I's preaching is, sometimes you just need to read it yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. You need, to, you need to know what you believe. When, you, when you're on the airplane and your phone's in airplane mode, you can't call me and say, hey, Pastor, what about this? No, you're on your own, buddy. Right? And, uh, folks, I so appreciate your prayers. We're going to read out of Acts chapter 1. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about why we're here. Today is uh, talking about glad tidings. Glad tidings and why we're here. Because, I don't know, in your life, do you have moments of times when you're in a room in the house and you can't remember why you got there? <laughs> or why you're there. You're like, huh. Oh, uh. Happened to me the other day. I'm like, there's, there's a reason I'm in here. I know I had a reason to come in here. Because I don't get out of the chair for just no reason. I know there's a reason. I never had that problem in the kitchen because I know if I'm in the kitchen, why I'm there. <laughs> And I want to talk this morning a little bit, too, about, because, see, do you know that your DNA never changes? Yes. Your body does. <laughs> yeah. Well, unless you get bitten by a spider that has a special disease, then your DNA changes and you become Spider-Man. <laughs> but your DNA never changes. From the time that you were... In the womb till the time you're in the tomb. Uh -huh. yeah, biblical, you know, that was the whole uh, trip to Israel. And uh, it doesn't change. Folks, I believe as our church at Glad Tidings, yes. our DNA needs to be our mandate. We need to lo not lose sight of our mandate and why we are here. Yes. See, there's a whole lot of people who lose sight of what they're about. There's a, yes. there's a whole lot of churches who lose sight yes. of what they're about. Yes. Folks, we have to stay focused. true. In fact, uh, stay focused, stay true. And every so often, you got to bring some, 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 some adjustment to your course even. Yes. Because you, you, it's easy to <coughs> gradually drift. <coughs> We have a pole barn that's about mm, 50 yards from our house, maybe a little farther. 
And uh, so I had to go out there the other day after the snow and uh, went out. And when I came back out the pole barn door, I noticed my trail in the snow. <laughs> Have you heard the saying about the blind man on the drunk mule? <laughs> I, I looked at my thing and I'm like, I don't know what happened there, but my trail went like this. And then to the door, I'm thinking, what? Can you not walk a straight line? <laughs> you know, I, somewhere in that process, I kind of veered. I don't know, something distracted me, and I, and I veered, and I had to correct so I could get in there. And as Christians, and sometimes as churches, we have to say, no, 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 this is why we're here. This is why we're here. And, and, and uh, if we go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and, and sometimes people, uh, they use this in missions, they use this in uh, and, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, they use it, but, but it's, a, it's a core of why Jesus left us here as the church. The church is God's idea. This is his idea. So it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after this, he was taken up their eyes and the cloud hid him from their sight. Jesus, Jesus, you have called us, you have chosen us, and you have empowered us to do your work. Lord, we desperately need you to speak in our lives, to give us the power to, to do what you've called us to do to do what you have called us to do. Lord, we just love you. We thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. The initial church, when Jesus left, see, there was, there, was the, there, there was a whole transformation that took place because most of the people, the early Christians, came out of the Jewish background. And so they were used to going to the synagogue or to the temple or to those kind of places as they became followers of Jesus Christ, they got kicked out. They got kicked out. They were no longer allowed to be a part of those things. In fact, the man who was born blind, yes. when they asked his parents, who is this Jesus? Because they asked the guy who was born blind, and, and he was like, I don't know. I don't know exactly who he is, but I, I can tell you what, never have we heard of one being born blind, being healed. And the parents were like, well, we know that's our son, but we don't know how he got healed because they knew if they said it was Jesus, they would get kicked out of the synagogue. They wouldn't be able to go to the temple. They wouldn't be able to do those things. And so God said, okay, you still need a body and you need fellowship. You need to be a part of a team. A team, I hear there's something going on today. <laughs> I'm rooting for the team in red. Some of you didn't get that. They both have red. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, it's tricky. I, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm rooting for, I'm rooting for Kansas City, but, uh, sorry, Rob, sorry. Yeah, there, there you go. First time I've gotten applause in 10 years. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, there's a, there's a tight end on the 49er, George Kittle, who played for Iowa, Amen. who's just right. fun and cool. And so I'm like, God, it's going to be a fun time. And whoever wins, it's okay. But those two teams are there because they have a team. As much as they talk about the quarterbacks or the other yes. thing, it's a team. Yes. It's a team. If you don't have a team, you don't go. And God brings us together yes. as, a, as a team. And so he, he said, uh, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Yes. And the church is not a building. He says, I will build my church. I will build my body of believers, and the gates of hell will not prevail. And I'm just telling you that 
in Iran where they kill Christians and they kill pastors, they're having revival. And the gates of hell will not prevail. In China, where they're tearing down churches, I can guarantee you that the word of God is spreading and people are getting saved. I can guarantee you there's a whole lot of people praying in China. Because suddenly they're thinking about eternity. Yes. You see, God says, I'm going to build my church, my body of believers. And he calls us to come together and to be a part because we need each other. So first of all, there is a message that we have. So, and that message is that there is someone who loves you enough to die for you. You know, we, three weeks ago we were in Israel and we learned about religions. There was the Jewish religion and then the Romans came in and they killed a bunch of them and broke a bunch of stuff down and, and then the Muslims came in and they killed a bunch of people and broke a bunch of stuff down and then the Crusaders with the cr Christian and they came in and they killed a bunch of people and broke a bunch of stuff. One city has been rebuilt. They were talking, I believe they had been rebuilt 25 times. I just kept thinking, well that is stupid. <laughs> Why would you tear it down? Just kill the people and take the place. They were big and remodeling, I guess. <laughs> what, was, what was those TV shows about remodeling? I don't know. Religion. Religion. When you come on the 23rd, there'll be a picture of a, of a ladder that's up on, on, on a balcony. That Because three churches own this building. The, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, there's actually three churches who own it. And there's a ladder up there that they can't take down because they can't decide who owns it. It's a wooden piece of junk ladder that's been up there for years and years because nobody remembers who it is. So, are you kidding? This is religion. This is the, in fact, I said that to our guy who was not a believer, he, he was Jewish. I said, I think these guys have lost sight of what it's all about. Whether you're, you're Jewish or, or whether you're a Christian, it, it's not about that. And see, Jesus took it beyond religion to loving people. So that's what we're called as the church, a body of believers who ministers and loves each other. So coming back to this local church, because it's interesting because different churches have different flavors, different, they have different singing. I personally believe we have the best worship leader in the whole world. <laughs> For those of you who are visitors, it's my wife. <laughs> oh yeah, and she's going to kill me now. She's like, I do not want spotlight, I don't want... Oh. Different. They're... they're they're, they have different focuses. So what is the focus and the heart of ours? I go back to Brother Arrowwood. In fact, I had a conversation in my office earlier this morning. I asked somebody, I said, do you know what the DNA of Glad Tidings is? There was two things. Brother Arrowwood was the guy, who, the pastor who started it, who's, who's still around. And he had, he had two things that were a passion of his. Number one was prayer. He is and was a man of prayer. That was, he was all about prayer. It needs to still be our DNA. How many of you are reading the book? Amen. 40 days. The 40 days circle the prayer. The rest of you, you bought the book, read it, okay? Wow. I'm just telling you. So today, did you read today's? Because it's about prayer and it's about the supernatural. It's about Today's, though, I just thought, wow, this is so for us as a church. So you have Moses. Moses, oh, yeah. Moses who, yes. greatest prophet. Yes. I mean, he was the lawgiver. He was that guy. Yes. And they're coming from Egypt to the promised land. And along the way, you know, it wasn't all smooth sailing. No. Folks, when you begin to follow Jesus, don't expect all sight for you. All smooth sailing. There's going to be some battles. Yeah. 
there's going to be some Amalekites. Yeah. So there were these Amalekites that came along and they said, we don't like you and we don't want you around here and we're going to attack you. And so uh, Moses wasn't the fighter, Joshua was. So they went to their respective places. Joshua to the front of the troops. And Moses went up on the mountain to overlook and he began to raise his hands and worship God and the Israelites were winning. But you know, Moses was old. Just, I'm just saying, he was at least 81. Okay, I'm in real trouble now, aren't I? Al, it's not that old, sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh. And he got tired. And so he put his arms down. And they began to lose. Exactly. They started losing. And somehow, somebody with Moses or Moses connected the dots. They're like, when your hands are up, you win. When your hands are down, you lose. Yes. There's an old song we used to sing. When you're halfway up, you're neither up or down. You know, there wasn't wise a king. Sorry. Oh, wow. How many of you ever sang that song? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Next week, babe, can we sing that? No. <laughs> Not a chance. Maybe in Sunday school. And, and they said, we've got to keep his hands up. And so they had him sit on a rock, and Aaron was on one side, and her was on the other side. And they held up his hands, and the victory was won. See, and I so appreciate, I am no Moses, but God has placed me in, in the pastoral leadership here. But I cannot carry the load myself. There are times when it's just hard and it's heavy and, you're, and you have sickness and you have all those things. I need people, men and women to come along and say, Pastor, we got you. This is, this is, this is not Pastor Bill's church. This is God's church. Amen. This is God's church for his business. So we're about prayer here. And so if you don't have that book... You're out of luck this year. But to just begin to pray every day. Begin to talk to God. I'm about done with mine. I'll give you mine when I'm done. Maybe. I might want to read it again. It's really good. Yes, amen. Yes, Lord, yes. Prayer. Secondly, yes. Brother Arrowwood was about missions. He was about missions. What is missions? Acts chapter... One eight. It, it was about reaching lost people. Yes. It was about reaching lost people. Yes, Lord. See, God has blessed us. Yes. I mean, uh, my wife and I, He has blessed us so much. You know, I'm so thrilled. Our kids are serving God and, and all that. Now, some of you have experienced failure to launch. <coughs> Your kids are still living with you. <laughs> Didn't happen for us. We might have overlaunched. <laughs> our uh, our son and his wife and our four grandkids are in India. India. They're in India, and uh, so uh, we were talking with them, and it's been a week and a half since they've had running water. At least a week and a half. I am praying it'll be working before I get there. <laughs> Not only that, but he shared, he said, we kind of had a miracle the other day, and I'm like, you know, thinking, and he said, yeah, um, Rachel smelled smoke, and I uh, went out, and their electrical boxes in India are out of wood. How is that a good idea? And it caught on fire. I'm like, I get it that it's a miracle, but don't tell your mother this. <laughs> Either one of us. It's like, no, don't. But you know, we have a God who's looking out. And so we're going to go, and, and he shared how there's going to be some, some teams there, and just some of the stuff that's going to take place. And because you guys... People across the world get to know about Jesus. Get to know about Jesus. 
But for a church to function well, first of all, we have to remember why we're here, and that's to see lost people get saved. As a pastor, I remember reading about D.L. Moody who was preaching a sermon, a two-part sermon on how to get saved. Two-part sermon. And he got halfway done. And uh, he said, I'll continue, I'll, I'll share with you next week how to get right with Jesus. Well, that was the week of the Great Chicago Fire. And, there, and he said, he said, I will never again do that. And, and, and my thought as the pastor here at Glad Tidings, because our job is to reach out to broken people. When people show up who are broken, for us to give them the good news, to love them, but also to point them to Jesus and help them to know Jesus. You know, and I've shared about my friend Mo, who, whose health and, and age is keeping him from coming, but how he shared. He came to this church at Broken Man, and there was a bunch of people who helped glue him back together in Jesus that core thing, that we never lose sight of that vision, that that's our heart, that's our passion. <coughs> that when people show up here, yes. there's somebody who says, welcome. Yes. Welcome. Yes. You want to sit with yes. me? Can I help you? Can I pray for you? I shared it on Wednesday night, but last Sunday, as I'm home and just trying to survive, and uh, my wife comes home and she goes, I almost hate to tell you, my wife, she said, we had a great service. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <and> Pastor Drew. <laughs> I am so thankful for such wonderful staff and wonderful people. Amen. We had a great service without you. I said, Awesome. That is, because you know what that means? It's not about me. That there is a culture of ministry that has developed here where you just love and minister to one another. That when you see people up front for prayer, you say, you know what? As, you, as the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you're like, I'm going to go pray for that person. That person is my friend. Or sometimes you don't even know who they are. And you go pray for them and with them. This is what it's about. Amen. It's about loving God yes. and loving people. Amen. Yes. Amen. So, glad tidings. Yep. You know, we got our annual business meeting today. How does the church stay alive? People get saved. People get saved, and then right over where that chair is, we give them some stuff to disciple them so that we can get them in the Word of God so that they can grow, so that they can go from being babes, brand new, not even understanding how, how the Bible works, to suddenly begin, being able to become mature Christians. So you come in broken, we love you, we pour into you, you get well, and then you go to work. You say, okay, this is my church. I'm going to own this. I'm going to pray. I'm going to give. I'm going to give. I'm going to give because I want to advance the kingdom of God. Somebody gave so this church could be here for you. And for you to say, you know what? I want to give. I want, I want to. Well, first of all, the Bible teaches that God says, I would like you to tithe. I would like you to tithe. And... Uh, I had one of my friends who's another faith. He goes, yeah, yeah, like once or twice a year, we, we give like 2% of what we made that week or month. And I'm like, huh. That's all good and well, but God says, hey, trust me in this. Trust me in this. We're able to do all the things we can do because you're faithful, because you give, because... But here's the deal, because my father was a minister, but more than that... Even before him, my grandfather was a tither. They tithed, they gave. Why? Because they, they read in the scripture where it says, if you will tithe, I will bless you. If you begin to tithe and walk in obedience in that area of your life, you will be under the umbrella of my blessing. 
How many of you guys know how much God blesses you when you're tired? How many of you got that? Yeah. And, and, and you, you don't say, when I win the lot, you say, you know what, I'm just going to start with what I got. I'm going to start with what I got. And then see what you will do, God, to see what you will do. I'm just telling you, he will bless you. And he, and, and he is, honestly, guys, I look around and, and I, I see how much we give to missions and how much, what do we give, almost 100000 Norma, how much did we give to missions last year? Eighty-some thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. That wasn't tithes and offering. That was on top saying, you know what? We want to bless these. We've got a whole board full of missionaries out there because we're, our DNI, DNA hasn't changed. We're staying true to what the mandate was, why we're here, why we're here on the south side, being that light to lost people and helping them and, and taking people who have no hope and introducing them to Jesus. And it changes everything. Amen. You begin to grow, and then you begin to mature. And you say, well, but I, I still have issues. I still have problems. I still have stuff I struggle with. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> you know what? I saw a thing the other day, hurting people, I've heard it say hurting people hurt people, but, but people who have been hurt and been through a hurting thing sometimes are the best ones to minister to those who are hurting. In Corinthians it talks about, therefore to comfort one another, the comfort yes. you yourself have received from God. And I can guarantee you that whatever you are going through, somebody here has already been through that. They've already been through that. And that one of the goals is that none of us have to do this alone. You do not have to go through the battles and the struggles and all the stuff alone. There are people who will reach out, who will touch you, who will pray for you, who will encourage you, who will bless you. Because we're part of a family. We're part of a family that God has called and brought together for such a time as this. And so, this morning, this morning, the first thing, the bottom line is, do you know Jesus? Because if I get you cleaned up, and I get you a job, and I get you a nice house, but you still don't know Jesus, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. Until you have Jesus Christ. And Satan lies to you. He lies. He gives you all these different lies. Oh, if you serve Jesus, your life won't be any fun or blah, 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 blah. I'm just telling you, if you serve Jesus, you will be set free and your life will be changed and you will have life more abundantly. Amen. Amen. Do not believe the lies of Satan. He is a liar and the father of all lies, and he's going to say to you, oh, your life is just fine, just like it is. God says, I got a better plan for you. I got a better plan for you. And he's brought you here to be a part of a family who will love you and encourage you. Let's bow our heads this morning. We need to be a part of the body. But to be a part of the body of Christ, there's something that he says we have to do. He says, if you will confess your sins, I will be faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He says, I want to forgive your sins. I want to take the thing that stands between you and God and wipe it away. All that past, all that junk, all that crap. He's saying, 
If you will confess your sins and turn away, I will forgive you and change your eternity. It's that simple. You don't have to earn your way. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. He says, I'm here to forgive your sins. I'm here to reach out to you. This morning, if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to forgive your sins and change your life and your eternity, I just invite you to slip up your hands and say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. That's what I want. Maybe you're here this morning. You're here this morning. And you also should just step up and come. Just step up and come. See, this is what I need. I need Jesus to forgive my sins. I need Jesus to forgive my sins. These two have already stepped out. They've already broken the ice. This morning is that time. Maybe it's your time to step out and say, yep, that's what I want to do. Jesus does a healing, a transformation. Mm -hmm. yes. 
As you begin to catch on to the why we're here, you begin to pray and spend time talking to God. And then you go on mission trips. And uh, I am so thrilled he's going along so that I can speak Spanish. Piquito. Banyo. Some of you don't know what that means, do you? That's the bathroom. These are words you have to know. Let's stand this morning. Yes, hallelujah. All right. Two o'clock. Two o'clock, we're going to have our annual church uh, business meeting. And uh, I'm just telling you, our church business meetings aren't like the ones in uh, Israel. We just moved the ladder. Yeah. Is the video off? Yeah. <laughs> Is it off now? No. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. See you later, guys.